Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to talk about a benchmark that may or may not have registered in your brain, but I'm sure you've seen the marketing speak. Anybody ever heard of hyperthreading? Or in the AMD camp, it's called SMT. So this is simultaneous multi-threading. This is the ability for your processor to run multiple tasks through a single core at the same time. Now, how is this different from a physical core? You've seen processors like my 1950X marketed as 16 cores, 32 threads. In this case, the SMT, or simultaneous multi-threading, is pushing two threads or two execution paths through the same core at the same time. So when you have 16 cores, you have two threads in each core, you're looking at 32 threads. Hyper-threading is the same thing from Intel, and you get to pay a pretty good premium on the Intel camp for that right. So you'll see processors, 8 cores, 16 threads, etc. Now, what you've got to wonder is, is it worth it? Is it the same as having another core that can execute a path? I mean, we're executing two paths. Does it matter if it's in its own physical core? Today we're going to try and answer that question for DaVinci Resolve. I'll tell you up front. It depends on your workload as to whether or not a processor core can effectively run two threads at the same efficiency, or even close. So let's check out the results. Hold on. What is this SMT thing? Well, it's called simultaneous multi-threading. It allows you to run more than one task in a processor execution pipeline at a time. Historically, processors ran tasks sequentially, one after the other. While simultaneous multi-threading was invented in the 60s, it finally hit the mainstream processors in the 2000s. So what does this mean for us? Well, as you can see, renders get a little bit quicker when you have SMT turned on. However, the difference isn't that great. And it varies based on your workload, as I mentioned up front. With the 1070, the native workload that relies heavily on the processor, not the graphics card hardware, pro gets about 13% faster when running with SMT on. The 1070, when using the NVE and C hardware processor, runs about 10% faster. But when you get to the 2080 Ti, the difference is much less stark. In fact, you only get 3% improvement with the 2080 Ti running in native encoding, and only 1% improvement when you're running the 2080 Ti with the NVENC hardware encoder. As Resolve has matured, it's taken greater steps to use graphics processing hardware. In fact, as a fun test, I turned off 8 cores in my processor, and the gray bar that you see now represented in our benchmark shows that it's only about a 25% increase in the amount of time required to render in both native and NVENC hardware encoding with half of the cores in place. This gives us quite a good reason to think hard and long about what we're going to put in our next computer. The graphics card is growing more and more important in DaVinci Resolve relative to the features that are available in the core processor. If you ask me, the SMT workload, the hyper-threading workload, and benefit of it really depends on what you're doing. It depends on the program you're using and how it leverages the processor versus the graphics card. In the case of DaVinci Resolve Studio, we've seen that it moves a lot more work over towards the graphics card and takes it away from the CPU. So you see less benefit out of those virtual threads or SMT or hyper threads that you might find inside modern processors. I have a feeling DaVinci Resolve Free is going to show a bigger discrepancy between turning on and off that SMT or hyper threading. Sounds like a topic for another video. Make sure to subscribe so that you catch that video when I get it done and have a great day. Thanks for watching.